Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a little project. And this may be elementary to some of you, so I'm going to jump right in. I am going to put on screen the pinout for this camera because we're going to connect it to an OSD. Uh, these cameras are quite popular, these all-in-ones. I'm not going to say the pinout's exactly the same for the most, but I think it's pretty similar for most. This is the Eshin TX02, by the way. And as we see here, this is the F4 OSD version 1. And I've got one out of the bag here. I've already used this once before, so I know this stuff works. Uh, so I'm going to put this aside. On the screen, we now see the pinout. If you know how to hook up an OSD and you just want to see the pinout, there it is. And now you can move on with the rest of your life. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and step through the process. I think there are probably a few people out there at least that could benefit from maybe watching it. Uh, I looked on YouTube and at least doing my searching uh, key terms, I did not find any YouTube videos on this particular topic. And hopefully I don't find out the day I post this that there's like a hundred of them already. I would be highly embarrassed. But essentially all we need to do is we need to separate the signal from the lens or the uh, image sensor to the VTX and that is as you saw by the screenshot all we need to do is sever let me get something to point with this inside pin and not that I found a tricky way of doing it I just found a way that works for me and so we're gonna walk through it and of course I use a little a video uh, indicator wire yellow is typical for video signal uh, so the first thing that we should always do is uh, these run I think it's 3.7 or 3.2 to 5 volts so we have a little 1S battery here we can plug in and this is going to be a mess and then I've got my little G-Tang watch here this takes a moment to power on there we go so you can see we've got an image there of my little desk work area I'll try not to flash it around too much and my computers and stuff up there. So the camera works. And I start out because we need a baseline. We need to know the thing functions. We don't want to bother doing this and then find out we got a dead camera because that does happen from time to time. So we'll turn this back off. Okay, that's off and off to the side here. Uh, our flight controller here, uh, these are pretty well labeled on the back side. I kind of wish they'd stop doing this where they label it on the back side. Label it on the top. I don't know. Maybe you guys build and you wire into the bottom. I don't. I typically wire into the top. I only wire into the bottom in very specific cases. But everything's labeled pretty well here on the bottom. But what we need to pay attention to are these here across the top. Um, and if we could read those, we would see we have video in, 5 volt, or sorry, video in, video out, 5 volt, and ground. So if you were to wire the camera, your red wire would go here for 5 volt your black wire would go here and then from the camera portion of the TX02 we would go to video in and then video out would then go back to the VTX so that's how we're gonna wire it but the first things first uh, we need to separate that inside pin uh, I use this little tool I picked it up off of Amazon uh, it says right there CHP 170 Co focus camera please CHP 170 and I use that because it's kind of angled and it's pretty narrow and I'm gonna have to be careful here not to mess this up because this is my last one of these we just kind of get the can get the uh, tool down in there and just snip away at it ever so slightly we don't want to get into that second one so be careful I think I felt something there I may have just hit it though I think I got it that time. So when you see that I twisted it just a little bit there. Now, let's power this back on. And we're going to plug it back in to make sure we haven't killed anything. We should have uh, a black picture if we've done this correctly. And we do. So a black picture typically indicates your VTX is working, but it's not getting any image from your camera portion. So this should have us all set. Back to turning this stuff off. All right, the next portion that I do, and I'm going this step by step because, you know, we want to be safe. We want to make sure we're doing this stuff and we don't end up 
you know, wrecking our equipment and then you have to wait three weeks for it to show back up for another order and you're another 20 some dollars down. So I'm just going, I've already added a bit of solder to these. I'm going to do the same thing to these pins. Hopefully I can see with the camera in my way. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Bam, there we go. I'd zoom in a lot more, but the more I zoom in, the more of my hands you're going to see, and it's going to make them look like i got big, hairy gorilla hands. So all we're going to try to do is just tin up this outside portion. Just get in and get out real quick. Try not to touch the PCB. I didn't get that one. This is a little awkward because I'm reaching across. Okay. Oh, I touched the board. You see there? Hopefully I didn't wreck it. It'll be easier for you. Oh, well, I'm going to leave that connected here. So this is the, the reason why I use just one wire. Is now I'm going to tack this on, check it again to make sure we've got video signal. Wish my eyes were better. Okay, I'm going to spin this so I can bring it in a little bit more organically so I won't burn the board again if I got away with it the first time. All right, little pull test. Oh, didn't have that one. Got to do that one again. Okay, I'm going to inspect this a little bit closer to make sure I didn't, you know, don't want to get anything over there. Now we're going to plug it in again. And now we have an image. Okay, so that far is working. And now we're just going to snip this wire. I strip with my fingernails. My fingernails I just cut today. <laughs> so they're a little bit shorter. And we'll tin these up. <clears throat> now we need to tin up our board and so you can even see in this particular case with the OSD part hopefully this will focus it so happens on the top part they did they put video in up here which is this one they put video out which is this one down here and then 5 volt and ground, so that's how you read them from the top down, so to speak. So we need to tin up our little pads that we need for video in and video out. So now we want to take the lead that comes from the camera portion and go to video in. Well, that took a moment, didn't it? I'm going to turn this board again. It's always easier for me to get at these things this way. If I'm making this look hard. It will be easier for you because you won't be doing it from so far away. You'll be able to get up nice and close. Oh, I got a little hair off of there. Did I get it? Let's inspect that. We'll pull test. All right, that looks good. Now, normally, if you had the pigtail wired up to your 5 volt and your ground, you would just power it up with the USB, and that does work. I've done that before. Um, in this case, we're going to plug it in. We see we have a black screen again. Get my USB cable here. Now you see we got Betaflight on there. Hopefully you can see that. And you can see we've got the horizontal scroll bar and we've got the uh, 
what's that fly time and on time and it's counting up 15 16 let me see if I can get that to focus there we go so now if I move this or if I move this and we've got our voltage reading right there too there it is that's how it's done I thought that might be handy for a few people if you weren't were interested in getting a, a micro board with a uh, OSD connected to it and you wanted to use one of the cameras maybe you're like me and you had a couple of these on hand pretty straightforward pretty simple once you've maybe been reassured by seeing it one time here um, otherwise you're probably off to something else already because I showed you the pinout uh, which is available on the uh, Banggood um, site. I think it, there's a link from their forums. And I'll, I'll just link the image down below and you'll be able to find it real easy. So if you need a, a reference and you don't want to go back through the video again, that will be there for you as well. Okay, uh, I have one other thing I want to contribute about this board. Well, two things. <laughs> I'm not certain about flashing these ESCs with this board. I know it will work. I've done it but I've had arming troubles with the board I have in a vehicle and I found that I had to switch uh, from Betaflight 3.1.7 to Betaflight 3.1.6 it would arm kind of odd uh, it would kind of odd arm once out every five times but if you plug the the USB cable in and you hit your arming switch it would arm every time unplug the USB cable put it back in hit your arm switch it would arm every time but you put battery in you put it on the ground it would arm sometimes it wouldn't sometimes when you got it to arm and you flew it around a little bit and maybe you had a bump and you crashed and you crashed upright and you were just going to take it down but maybe you disarmed when you were in the midst of the tumble it wouldn't arm again uh, I switched from 3.1.7 to 3.1.6 and that problem seemed to go away back to what I was originally saying about flashing ESCs it will work uh, but I have noticed that when you're getting ready to flash the ESCs and it could have just been the case I tried two different sets I tried a uh, Razor Star 12 amp and a Cicada 10 amp and had the same results uh, both four and ones that every once in a while one of the ESCs wouldn't show up and that seemed to be kind of a first for me so I'm a little bit worried that these boards might not be all they're cracked up to be um, but they're pretty cheap and I think you can get this one in the US so if you're looking to build a micro and you want something fast, pretty inexpensive, I don't know that you can buy these boards off of any other side other than Banggood. I haven't seen them off of Get FPV. I haven't seen, I think Lumineer's got a stack now that has an OSD, but I don't think you can buy the board just itself. Uh, one other thing that is uh, important to note about this, this is the F4 version, not to be confused with the F3 version, that when you're doing a satellite-based receiver like these, I could not get any of these to bind with the board. I had to bind a receiver with a different board and then bring the bound receiver to this board in order to make things work. You may have different results and these are all DSM based receivers. They're all kind of satellites or satellite clones. I just couldn't get them to arm. I spent three or four hours trying different ones thinking I had a bunch of bad ones in my bin um, before I finally decided to try another board. And that's one of the things if you if you've crashed a board and you and or you've replaced a board, you've got a spare board, keep it around. You never know why you might need it. And this is exactly a case for an old board that you don't want to fly any for. The one I was using was a NACE 32 based uh, ready to fly quad flip 32. It was a fine board at its time, but you know, this thing's progressed so much that uh, it's just one I keep in the bin. So that's all I had to contribute about this board and how to set up a all-in-one camera with an OSD on this. It works pretty well. And I'm excited that we're seeing more and more of these flight controllers with OSDs. I'm a fan of OSDs. At first, I didn't see the purpose in it, but as I started flying more and more vehicles, the tuning process is so much faster, and you can keep track of your batteries better, at least when you're paying attention. You've probably noticed in a few of my videos, I'm not paying attention very well. That voltage is flashing, and I'm still flying. But if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave those down below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps spread the word, spread the channel, and it helps uh, people find the content that I create, and I always appreciate your contributions to that effort. All right, thank you for watching.